What's going on, guys? And welcome to our lesson today, where we're going to be talking about allocating resources as an allied health clinic owner. Now, before we get started, please like and subscribe. It helps us to reach more people and to ha have a bigger impact. And also, if you look down below this video, you'll find the Assess Your Clinic link. This one, my friends, is a doozy. Give it a tickle. It'll help you to understand what are the blind spots in your business so that you can help to scale and to grow your clinic and to achieve your version of success. Now, let's get stuck into it for today. What we're going to be talking through is allocating resources, especially early on in business. Because something that I hear all too often is, as a small business owner and early on in business, I, I wonder how can I compete with these bigger businesses out here? When I see these huge clinics doing three to 10 mil a year, how can I compete with those people? I don't have the same resources that they have. So what I want you to focus on is what are the resources that you have that you can use to your advantage that they can't use to their advantage. Now, as a big business, there are, there are lots of, I guess, opportunities and advantages to that. But one of the advantages or, or two of them, I'd say, as a small business. Now, number one is time. You can do things that don't scale. You can build relationships in a way that doesn't scale yet. You can go out into the community and add value in a way that doesn't scale yet. Now, the other thing you have is energy. It's passion. It's enthusiasm, okay, because you have that founder energy. And again, for a large business, it's hard because the founders can be so far removed from the operations of the business at any one time. When it's, say, you or you and one other person, there's a lot more of your energy and your passion in that. So time, so things that don't scale and your energy and your passion. They're the two things that we would like to focus on today. So let's jump in. I'm going to just pull up my iPad and we're just gonna go over a couple of things uh, to go through some examples here. So, and do, do take notes if you want for this one too. I think there, there hopefully is gonna be some gold in this for you, but let's get kicking. Now, if we look at time, so if I put time up here, and when we say time, we're thinking about doesn't scale. So we're thinking about what are activities, what are strategies or systems we can do that don't scale. Now, as a business consultant, I'm often teaching people how to scale their business, how to grow their clinic. But early on, an advantage you have is you can, is you can do those things that don't scale. Now, what this might mean is, you know, personal cards, personal Thank you cards. It can be personal meetings. Right. For me early on, I did a lot of work out at gyms and in the CrossFit community. And so it would be me at CrossFit events. And so you have the founder, right? At events. And you are the best salesperson for what you do. You're going to be better than anyone that works for you. You're going to have that enthusiasm, that energy that is just, it's impossible to recreate, okay? So think about what are these things you can do that don't scale? So what I get you to do right now is write down, what are three things? So one, two, three. What are three things you can do that wouldn't scale? So when you stop doing it, it would be hard for someone else to do it in the same way that you do that, okay? So take a moment now, go one, two, three, three things that you can do that don't scale that as you grow, you would have to adapt how you do it because it's no longer you doing the thing, okay? So write those down. So for me, it was the personal thank you cards, it was the personal meetings, and it was the founder being at actual events. They can be hard to scale. You can get team members to do that over time, but the, the value in it being you is, is, is quite, quite strong. And the other thing that doesn't scale is the founder seeing clients. The amount of small businesses I work with who the founder is always busy. They're incredible at what they do, their energy, their passion, their enthusiasm, it just comes across, okay? It can be hard to replicate that in team members. Not impossible, but to the level that you do it and it's your business, it can be really, really hard. And so you seeing clients is an activity that doesn't necessarily scale, but helps to scale your business up to a certain point. 
So what I'd like you to do is have three things here that you can focus on that help you to grow your business that don't scale rather than trying to add in scalable digital marketing techniques early on. All right, they can be very costly and you might not have the resource of money uh, to hire someone to do it, to get someone to do it and make that happen. Now, the next one down here is very related, but we're gonna say energy, passion, oops, passion and enthusiasm. So what you would want to think about here, that's a P by the way, uh, what you'll think about here is how can you, or what are the activities, system structures that you can do right now that add in energy, passion, and enthusiasm? Because if you can effectively be doing those early on, and again, it's hard to scale this, but early on, these are the things that are going to help you to grow faster because you're going to have an advantage over those larger clinics where they need to use scalable techniques here. So thinking about this, uh, one of them could be handling cancers, oops, or handling inquiries. I know that whenever I pick the phone up <laughs> early in my days of being a clinic owner uh, and I was talking to people on the phone, at A, it taught me a lot about the questions that were coming in. So it's really valuable to be the person who has answered the phone you know, for a reasonable amount of time so you can train future team members. So having a really good understanding of that, having an understanding of how you turn that maybe by that person who's cost shopping, trying to find the cheapest service, how you turn that person into a paying client. How do you do that? By showing them the value. So they're not just going, this place is 100, this place is 90, this place is 80. You might be the 100 clinic, $100 for the appointment. But if you add twice as much value as those other two and you're able to show why, then people are more likely to go with you. Okay, so I hope you can understand this. That's the energy, passion, enthusiasm. And that comes from the founders. Handling inquiries can be one. Following up cancellations. Oops, that's a P. Struggling P's. Cancellations. So following up cancellations can be challenging with your team uh, to do it in a really scalable manner. Uh, I found health professionals don't particularly love to, to do this, so we have to create some good structures here. But for yourself, going through and understanding when you do follow up people who have canceled or they haven't booked back in, how can you connect with that person? And using that energy, passion, and enthusiasm, how can you add more value to them than they would reasonably expect? And how does that affect the long-term reactivation rates? It's going to look different in every clinic. But for me, in our clinic, what we looked at was instead of calling people up to say, hey, we want you to come back in, we called them up to say, hey, it's paid here. Um, haven't seen you in a couple of weeks now. And I just wanted to touch base and see how is everything going? How's the back? How are those exercises going? Going well? Great, great. Now, and then I would go into either a progression or a regression based on what they've said. No worries. Well, based on what you've said today, I'm actually going to email through a progression for that one. Or if they've uh, had a few troubles, I'm going to send through a regression for that one. That's going to help you to continue to improve. Now they're going, well, this person, they've just called to add value. They haven't tried to book me back in. It's not all good for the therapist. It's not all good for me. It's not all good for them. It's actually a really smooth experience for everyone involved. And so for us, we just reframe them to, you know, an extra point of value call. That's all it is. If they want to book back in, fine. If they don't, they leave with a really good taste in their mouth that, hey, these people really care. They really care about me and my results. Okay. So handling inquiries, following up cancellations and building referral relationships. These are the three that come to mind for me. So building referral, jeez, oh, my gosh, drop the pen. Uh, so building referral relationships here. The, the thing that really sticks out here for me that really worked well is thinking about who are my ideal clients? Who is someone influential to them? And how can I build a relationship with that person? And how can I take it beyond being just a professional relationship? How can I turn this person into a genuine friend? Someone who I enjoy hanging out with, they enjoy hanging out with, hanging out with me. 
And they then decide to refer to me, not just because I'm good at what I do, but because they like who I am as a person. And I've talked about this many times that being a good human is a really good strategy in business and building those referral relationships where you go out and, and you can actually get to know people and get to know them on a really personal level. It's one of the best things you can do early on in your business. Often people say, what is the best marketing strategy, the best Facebook ad, best Google ads, et cetera. If you're early on in business and you've got say one to three practitioners and yourself, I'd be focusing more on these things than any digital marketing strategy because I believe your return on investment would be much higher, okay? That, for me, is where I would start. So what I'd like you to write down is go one, two, three. What are the three key areas where you can show your energy, passion, and enthusiasm and really pull people along for the ride that you can start working on in your clinic today? So at the end of this one, you're gonna have the three things where time, things that don't scale, and energy, passion, enthusiasm. And you might find there's a lot of crossover here. So I'm gonna keep this one short, sharp, and shiny, but I wanted to go through that because it's a question that's been coming up a lot around what is the best digital marketing strategy for X, Y, Z. And for clinic owners who money isn't the resource they have a lot of yet, but at the moment it's time, energy, enthusiasm, that is where I would be starting. Where can you do those things that don't scale right now to get your business to the point where you can add in those scalable aspects. Okay, there's there's different levels as you go through business and you have to look at what are my strengths here? What are the resources I have in abundance or what can I create in abundance and how can I apply that in a strategic, meaningful way in order to achieve my goals? That's it for today, my friends. I hope that lesson helped you to understand allocating resources early on in business. And when I say early on, I said sort of one to three practitioners. That is where I would start. As always, it's been fantastic, my friends. Assess Your Clinic is just below. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, my friends.